Hi, Lori. Hi, Bill. Hi. <laughs> Oh, no, there's about 20 people. And another couple hundred. Oh, and, and, and another uh, many people on live stream. Good. Okay. Well, then let me uh, address my remarks appropriately. How's that? What we're doing here today is we are in the middle of waging two separate lawsuits. The first lawsuit has great promise. And we filed it against the county of San Diego. Can you hear me okay, by the way? Yeah, yeah what's that extra noise? Do we know? All right. Yeah, she's muting it. Okay, the first suit is against the county of San Diego. And this suit is in a very promising stage right now. And the reason why is for a couple of reasons. One is that we've actually uh, not only filed the papers, but we've received the response from Michael Vu, who's a registrar of voters, who is creating so much misery for the people in that county as well as in Ohio many years ago, for the same kind of activity. And that activity is uh, going through a dance to try to avoid counting the provisional ballots. And in that dance, uh, failing to include the provisional ballots within the 1% percent totality, which is, uh, we believe, a critical aspect of being able to verify the machines against the paper ballots. Now, what has happened here is Michael Vu, the registrar's argument, is simply, that's right, I don't count the provisionals within this manual tally, and everybody else does it the same way. Well, one, that's not true. But two, it is true about some of the biggest counties in LA who have written declarations in support of vote. Dean Logan of LA County supports vote. Neil Kelly of Orange County supports vote. The uh, individual who runs Santa Cruz, Contra Costa, several other counties, they all support vote, saying we do it wrong too. In other words, they are making a calculated decision. They don't want to get in trouble singly. If they're going to get in trouble, they want to be able to point finger to Dia and say, well, you know, we, we basically are doing it this way, and it's the only way to get this election done. There's no other way. We don't have enough time because there's so many provisional ballots, and they get counted at the end. So there. that's their argument. It's an incredibly weak argument. It's basically an argument of uh, what the lawyers would call substantial compliance. Uh, and what less cynical people would call, you know, not really conducting an election at all, because there's no way to bear it. So it's a remarkable position here. And the, the remarkableness of it continues because we've got so much evidence to show not only has the one percent tally been done incorrectly, but the entire state has been subjected to a systemic refusal to let observers observe the election which is central to an important election. I don't know if you saw the papers today, but in Austria, they blocked the observers from observing the election, and they, and they canceled the election. The Supreme Court of uh, Austria has said that they must do a revote because they blocked out the observer. Mm -hmm. They said, it, it doesn't matter whether or not it was done correctly or incorrectly. We don't have any evidence of fraud, but you did it wrong. You've lost the trust of the people. You can't continue in that way. You have to do it over. You guys with me? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, this is important news from Austria. I mean, apparently Austria doesn't have to conduct the Democrat process. And the question is whether, you know, those of California are going to be able to conduct the democratic process. Uh, I, you know, this election simply should not be certified. And Emily Lee brought up the good point to me a few minutes ago. Well, what if you conduct it that way? How in the world are the Senate races going to happen? How in the world are the propositions going to be run? Well, I'm sure that they're going to find a way to do that. And maybe what will be the past, best way to do this is maybe uh, certify the election is poor, but certify and then challenge it in the election time. Or maybe everything should go on halt until we uh, figure out a way to do it right and then pass some kind of emergency legislation in California. In other words, I think what we are provoking here is a little bit of a social crisis. 
not the end of the world. This, by the way, was the truck that was shredding probably ballots. Right. This was the truck that was, the uh, photo was taken during the press conference in San Diego, and uh, it had parked in front of Michael Vu's office, uh, the, the registrar's office. Yeah, okay. Well, let me talk about the truck for a moment, uh, if I may. Uh, the truck is more symbolic of our flight than anything else. It's, I kind of draw the analogy of this shredder truck, which was pulled up in front of our press conference at the ROV on Tuesday when we were in, talk, having a press conference about these lawsuits. I think the shredder truck is kind of like the kind of like you know a nuclear weapon in a certain way. If you don't want to use a shredder truck at an ROV. You don't want to bring the shredder truck to the ROV. In any it's, it, 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 one polite way to put it is it, it's extremely inappropriate. Okay. <laughs> Uh, when you bring a shredder truck to an ROV while an election count is in process, people tend not to trust you. And, and, and this is the biggest black eye Michael Hu could have ever imagined for himself if he spent a month trying to think about it. What we need to do, in my humble opinion right now, and I'm asking everybody in the room to please think about what I'm requesting, and everybody on live stream, is for a few moments I'd like to not talk about the machines, which we all agree should not be used, for the same reason, you know, as a shredder truck should not be used at a ROV. Uh, it creates paranoia, it creates fear, and it's better to not even have them in the discussion, is my point right now. I mean, Cliff and Bob have a great case that's going to happen nationwide, and that's an important thing. But what we're doing in California is just as important and just as vital and just as powerful and just as effective as any case against the machines. And the nice thing about it is we can talk about it in language people understand, that they don't have to be statisticians, and they don't have to be engineers to understand that the principle of garbage in, garbage out. You know, if you're not allowing people to observe the election, if you're not using a proper testing device to test the machines against the paper ballot, you, don't have, you haven't conducted a proper election. And it shouldn't be certified, and it should be contested, and it should not be accepted by rational people on planet Earth, or certainly in the state of California. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so I was just about to answer this question, but you might also bring up stuff with California after I answer this one. Sure. Um, how long will it take to start discovery of evidence once the lawsuit in Ohio is filed? Well, um, Cliff believes it will happen extremely quickly. Um, and uh, when the lawsuit is set up against Edison Research, uh, uh, they're going to begin discovery and if it transfers into the RICO lawsuit, they will start it ASAP as well. And I mean, that's one of the reasons why it has to be a strong case to, to get to the step two, okay? So do you want to say anything about any discovery of evidence in California? Well, uh, in California, it would ordinarily take 20 days, but given the fact we've got a truck, given the fact we've got a shredder truck in San Diego County, uh, it's going to have to go a little faster than that, I'm hoping. Uh, we already, uh, I wrote the shredding company and said, please keep all your records, including but not limited to the shredded material itself. <laughs> and uh, we will see where we go with this. We, we got a picture of the driver. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Yeah, I said, identify <laughs> the driver for us. Right now, I've heard nothing but silence. But uh, once we're done here, I'm going to get on the horn Saturday afternoon. I turned my feet. Up, another one of our have a little photo of talk. <laughs> and then they drove away. They literally drove to the scene, realized that they were being caught in the act, and drove away. Is what happened. And uh, quite remarkable. And we were right in the middle of the press conference, and we were all in you know fighting mode. Look at the media. The person who was smart enough, Maggie O'Neill, to uh, make sure the picture got taken was so stunned she didn't say anything about it to us in the next hour because we had other things we had to do. 
And she couldn't believe it because it was literally unbelievable. And but we vetted it three times, and uh, we got him. Yeah. So. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only thing that was missing was a Hillary. <laughs> <laughs>
did admit error and he did fix it. And then I know that I wrote a letter after hearing about this and said, well, then go back and fix the ones you already screwed up because he said he wasn't going to do it. And maybe it was just my letter or maybe it was other people's actions like Alex for Bernie as well. I don't know all the details of how many people were in clinches, but we turned him around on that issue as well. And the, the, so this is, we're talking about thousands of votes for Bernie that wouldn't have go, uh, gone into his tally any other way. So this election, as you can see, is continuing right to this moment. And uh, in terms of future steps, uh, we're getting near the end of the counting. And so we, we want the investigation to continue. We don't want it to uh, end one month or two months or three months down the line. We have to build a statewide uh, movement for fundamental transformation, just like we do around Citizens United, global warming, the other issues that are tearing our country apart, Black Lives Matter. It's all part of the same transformation, the political revolution. So besides that, one very concrete place I would urge people to start thinking about strategically is the poll workers, because the poll workers are, in many cases, terrific. They're the best part of our democracy. But they're also among the worst part of our democracy because they're poorly trained, poorly paid, and, no, and not motivated or worse, motivated to do the bidding of their master. And that's what we see when you see poll workers shouting at other poll workers to shut up during the training when they're trying to learn how to tell people how to vote for president. It's very, very serious. And if we had a more vital democracy, poll workers would come forward, they wouldn't ask for pay, they'd do it out of love of their neighbors. We don't have that here like they do in Canada, like they do in Europe. We, our society simply is not functioning as well, and there's a lot of reasons why we could talk about off mic. Um, I have a, a question here. Um, uh, what is the point of suing just one county, like San Diego? Why not sue the entire state of California? Well, my joke on this is I. I oh. Oh, I'm sorry, you want more ideas about uh, how to move strategically? Let me try a minute more. I felt like I was taking up too much time, but I agree with you. There's some really important strategic thinking that needs to happen here. Uh, the most important thing I would say is to support these lawsuits over the next two weeks, quite frankly, if I can toot our own horn here, because I think we've got the best vehicle we'll probably have in 20 years to change elections. I don't think we're going to get this chance again. So every day in the next 14 days is extraordinarily valuable. To be perfectly honest, I turned to Lori twice today, uh, y yesterday and today, and was kind of trying to beg out of coming today because we're working so hard in coordinating media and legal efforts. And she said, but other people need to know too, and it's better for you to be on camera than off camera and I and I said I was going to do it and so by God you know I I wasn't going to turn that car around in the middle of that traffic I wanted to be here and it's really important for us to be talking face to face where possible and on live stream where we can so if you wonder what else I think that's the other big thing I think I think LA could play a significant role and I can segue right into the next question about why not 58 counties because by suing the Secretary of State all 58 counties can bring forward their evidence in the next 14 days. That's what's so exciting about our situation. Mm -hmm. And we spent a lot of time thinking about it. And, and we found the ticket. Mm -hmm. We got the ticket. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, one thing I'd like to ask is, um, if Padilla is, is shown to be basically guilty of um, hurting and or, you know, manipulating this election, what recourse do we have as as voters here? Well, I think he should be impeached. I think he should resign. Yeah. You know, yeah. in, in, you know in, in the French Revolution, they used pitchforks and guillotines for people like him. <laughs> 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 and I'm a nonviolent guy, but I, I don't, I, I really, I, I believe this is war. You know, in the most fundamental aspect, when you take away the right to vote, you take away everything else that our society is constructed on. Everything. And so with that said, 
Uh, of course we want to move deliberately. Of course we want to move nonviolently. But we should treat this as the most important thing we're ever going to do. Yeah. Does the DA have a legal to responsibility to uh, not uh, have a conflict of interest? No. In my understanding, as, a, as an elected official, Sure, I will repeat the question. The question is, does Padilla have a legal responsibility but, uh, to step aside from this situation because of a conflict of interest? Is that fair reformulation? Uh, and it's an excellent question. I think you set me up, and I appreciate it, because the, the answer is, in my mind, he's an elected official. He's a secretary of state. It's an extremely political position. He's allowed to weigh in. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it ethical, 